Hello, it's that time of the week again. Time for Monday Musing. <sighs> I think I feel like I always sigh when I start these. <laughs> I guess it's just such a relief. That means that it's Monday night, right? We made it through the day. So that's always a good thing. We'll just wait a little bit, let a couple people hop on. So I guess you could tell from my post, and maybe you've seen it in a lot of other people's feeds, that today is the International Day of Happiness. It's kind of right up my alley, I guess. The only other thing that would be up my alley, I guess, is an International Day of Coffee. <laughs> I could share a lot about that, too. Honey, you said that I was lice. You, <laughs> you might want to fix that and say I'm live. <laughs> or just type it again. <laughs> oh, We'll wait another couple minutes here. Let a couple people hop on. And then we'll start our discussion of happiness. Hi, Stacy Schaefer. Thanks for joining. Good to see your name and face pop up. I love that profile picture of you. So, our topic tonight, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I think a couple of people will join in as they can. Um, our topic tonight is happiness. And it's appropriate because today's the International Day of Happiness. And I actually kind of slacking because I didn't even know that. Um, one of my friends told me, um, sent me a, a link telling me that it was the International Day of Happiness. So that just made my whole day. And a lot of people had posts all over their timelines that, um, that it was the International Day of Happiness and talking about happiness. So it really made me feel great. Um, it also makes me feel great that um, while I am certainly not an authority on happiness, um, I think a lot of people think of me when they think of that topic. And I guess it's because I try to share happiness with others. Um, I try to be happy myself, but I also try to share it because I've always, ever since I was a little girl, um, I just want everybody to be happy. <laughs> so I'm doing my part um, by spreading the word um, and sharing in happiness. And hi, Dina. Thanks for hopping on. Um, I'll, I'll go into a little bit of detail about the last week in particular. It's been very happiness focused. And um, it, it's been kind of interesting. Um, Jim and I went to um, a lecture at, um, hi Christy, went to a lecture on the science of happiness. And I found out about it. Um, it was here in town. I found out about it when a friend sent me the link about it. It was an Eventbrite thing and she sent me the link and said, you know, you might be interested in this. And so I kind of sat on it for a while and I, I you know, thought about it. And um, as we got closer early in the week, I asked Jim if he wanted to go. And I, I don't think he was super excited about it because he didn't really know, you know, what to expect. And of course, I didn't really either, but I'm a little bit more adventurous about that kind of thing. And, and happiness is kind of my thing. But he was really glad he went, and I'm glad he went with me. Um, we really enjoyed ourselves. Um, the Chrysalis Institute, I think it is, sponsored it, and they're all about happiness. They're all about a lot of things, but happiness is one of them. And it was um, Catherine Sanderson, and she's a PhD, but she was the farthest thing that you would expect from a PhD. She's very slender, very um, down to earth, not self-effacing at all. She's she actually was voted one of the top 300 college professors in the country. 
And again, you would never know it. I mean, I can understand why, because we just loved her to death, but you know, n not anyone who had any airs about her at all. And she was hysterical, just hysterical. And she shared examples from her own life, you know, made fun of herself. Um, the kind of thing that, that you want to see when someone's talking about any subject. Um, and it's fascinating a little bit to me that there have actually been hundreds of scientific studies on happiness, and they've measured every kind of um, type of happiness, every kind of situation and how it affects happiness. Um, the biggest thing I found out, and I guess I knew this, but it, it, it was interesting, is that about 50% of our happiness is based on genetics. That's our inherent happiness. Whether or not we're generally happy um, without having to try or, um, or we're not. And about 50% of our happiness factor um, out of the gate is based on genetics. Um, and I'll share in a couple minutes on, um, there were 10 things that she suggested you could do to raise your level of happiness. Um, which was great because, you know, her, her desire was out of that list of 10 that there'd be two or three things that everybody could do. Predisposition, that's what it's all about, Christy. Hey, Jessica, thanks for hopping on. Hi, Rebecca. Um, yeah, so happiness is kind of my thing. Um, I'm, you know, I've shared before, I... I like to think I'm happy. I think I'm an optimist, and I guess that's a little bit different. But optimists are generally happy until they're proven wrong. <laughs> so I and I really um, I started out kind of as an experiment. I don't remember what prompted me. I, I meant to go back and research it today. Um, last year I started a hundred days of happiness. Um, it was a little exercise. I think I saw somebody had posed a question, you know, can you be happy for 100 days? And I thought, you know, that's, that's a tall order. And especially at the time that I started it, I think, you know, it was right after Jim had gotten out of the hospital or whatever, and we had like the maximum levels of stress in our lives. Um, but I thought, well, you know what, I'm, I'm going to just try it. And I thought, you know, if after a week, I just decide this is actually impossible. <laughs> I'll just quietly stop doing it and nobody will notice. <laughs> but after about a week, um, it kind of got to be a habit and I started re you know, going online and looking for, for things to post about happiness. And um, then at, you know, a week turned into a month and, and after a month, it just got to be like, well, I've already done 30 days. I might as well just keep going. Plus, I'm just a little bit competitive enough that it's like, I'm doing this. <laughs> so as I approached the end of the 100 days, I was like, wow, I really don't want this to end. So then I found that there's um, three, happy 365. And I thought, okay, well, that's what I'm going to do then. I'm just going to be happy every day. Or I'm going to talk about happiness or encourage happiness every day. And one of our good friends saw that when I said I was going from 100 happy days to happy 365, he commented, happy 365 equals happy life. And I just thought that was really cool. Thought that was really cool. So that's, that's what I'm striving for, happy 365, or at least, like I said, to share happiness, 365. Um, and I love that people send me things, um, to share, send me pictures, thought of you when I saw this. Um, that's really awesome. It, it really makes me feel good. Um, there are two kind of unlikely people that I kind of focused on for this. Um, one, um, Dr. Sanderson in, in her lecture talked about, and she said that um, of all people that Nelson Mandela um, declared that he was just fundamentally an optimist when people asked him how he could remain so hopeful and happy um you know he was in prison for years years and years and years um some people's whole lifetime you know and but he said that he just he was just fundamentally an optimist and that's what got him through and so to me you know that's a pretty pretty strong statement about uh, like, oh, well, good, I'm glad I'm an optimist, <laughs> then maybe I'll, I'll be able to make it through um, whatever might come down the pike. Um, and then today in the little social media exercise that, you know, we're going through and doing posts based on certain letters of the alphabet, 
and today the exercise was to do a quote. And I thought, well, things are going to get too jammed up because I kind of like to, um, I kind of like to, you know, have a certain rhythm. I don't want to get everything too jammed up all, you know, in a few hours time. And, you know, I did have to work today, so I couldn't be posting all day long to get everything in. So I came across some quotes by Helen Keller, of all people, and I'm sure everybody knows, you know, she was blind and deaf. Um, she was the first blind and deaf person to graduate from a college. And, I mean, she was just an incredible woman. She let nothing stop her from accomplishing whatever she wanted to accomplish, and she was just great. So three of her quotes that I found that I just thought were really um, – appropriate for the topic that I wanted to share. Um, the first one is, we are never really happy until we try to brighten the lives of others. And, you know, that's really what it's all about, isn't it? To try to um, make other, help other people be happier. Hey, Jenna, I was talking about you a few minutes ago, uh, talking about the science of happiness and how you had sent me the link to that. And I was so glad I did. You'll have to hop on after it's over and, and uh, hear how great it was. Um, another quote that Keller says is that your success and happiness lies in you. Resolve to keep happy and your joy and you will form an invincible host against difficulties. I thought that was really powerful. Now keep in mind, this was from a woman who was blind and deaf <laughs> and uh, you know, and still she, she had this, this happiness about her. Um, she marveled at life and everything was just a, a wonder to her and, and um, just such a great example on how to live. And the last one that I really like is that life is either a daring adventure or nothing. So again, that from a woman who was both blind and deaf and who started out life, you know, with... A, a really grim prognosis, and he just overcame every obstacle that was ever put in her way. I read somewhere, I was doing a, a little bit of research on her, because if you know me, you know that I do research. Um, she was one of the fastest typists um, in whatever company or organization she was involved in, on both the traditional typewriter and the Braille typewriter. And she was the fastest one on the traditional typewriter, so I thought that was kind of funny. That's one of those overcoming difficulties, I guess. Um, so anyway, I just I wanted to share those 10 things um, that Dr. Sanderson talked about because, like I said, um, her hope was, her belief was that out of the list of 10, there would be two or three that everybody could, could decide to do or could pick up the pace of. Um, First of all, she said, you know, besides the fact that there's the genetic predisposition, she said there are some behaviors that we can do generally. Um, one of my favorite was eating chocolate. <laughs> she said eating chocolate fats and sugar um, elevates your mood. So that was really cool. And I was like, yes, I like this lady. <laughs> um, exercise. That didn't make me so happy. But it is a scientific fact, and I think we all have to admit that we know that. Exercise, even if it's just going for a walk, um, makes you happy. And really being outdoors, being in nature makes you happy. She said they did a study on patients in the hospital who had identical, almost identical health going in and had identical surgeries. Um, and one set of patients, their room overlooked a parking lot, and the other set of patients, their rooms overlooked a park. And to a person, the people in the rooms who, who overlooked the park recovered faster, had less pain, um, and were discharged earlier from the hospital. Just looking at nature um, caused people to, to be happier and to have a better sense of well-being. So that was kind of a, a very interesting thing. I know on the days that I go for a hike around my building, my office building a few times, not only do I have more energy and, you know, I love getting the, the sunlight and the fresh air, but it does put me in a better mood. So I guess I'm, I'm living proof of that. Um, a lot of us will be happy to know that she said shopping can make us happy. Um, and I think she meant like shopping for fun. I don't think she meant grocery shopping, you know. Um, but the, especially if you shop with a friend 
or with another person because just the relationship and the social interaction. Um, and she said a lot of it does have to do with your personality, your level of self-esteem, your optimism. So, you know, that, that's kind of just an, an overview of, of what she said to, um, to introduce it. Um, she did say, and this was kind of interesting, that in a lot of different studies that they've done, cell phones had a detrimental impact on people's happiness and sense of well-being. Um, not just um, talking on the cell phone, but even the presence of a cell phone in the room. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I, I have a lot of trouble doing without my cell phone. <laughs> so, and I know a lot of us do. But that's something that I, I'm really um, going to try to be cognizant of. So, and then like I said, about 50% of your happiness is based on personality. So let's real quick get into the 10 strategies and see if there's one that um, that you think might work for you. She said that the number one strategy for increasing our happiness was um, to change our behaviors, meaning like get more sleep, um, get more exercise, spend time outside, meditate. She said meditation was one of the, had one of the strongest um, impacts on enhancing happiness when people started to meditate, even for just a few minutes a day. Um, find your fit, both professionally and personally. Like find people that you're compatible with, hopefully a spouse, but also, you know, people, a social circle that works for you and hopefully you can find a job that's a good fit or a profession or a volunteer activity whatever you know you do that occupies the majority of your time um, read a good book read a book that you love um, any kind of book um, as long as it's one that that you can kind of use as an escape so that was interesting I do love to read so I was happy to hear that one keep a gratitude journal this has been huge for me and I think it's one of the reasons I, maybe that I've been able to um, to continue with this happiness challenge is to keep a, a journal um, of everything that you're grateful for. Um, this one I thought was the toughest and but she said that it was so impactful that you should make a gratitude visit. Um, and what that is, is that you, you think about the people that impacted you for the better the most in your life. And you write them a letter thanking them for, um, for the contribution that they made to your life. And then you go physically go to them, go to visit them and read them the letter. She said that was just um, like mind blowing in terms of of how it raises the happiness not only of the person being read to but the happiness of the person doing it and she said you know don't wait till it's too late because too often we do um, wait until it's too late to let people know um, what a difference they made I would think that at a minimum send them a letter <laughs> you know or call them on the phone um, just to let people know um, so that that one was kind of wow um, and smiling, she said, even if you aren't happy, because she said, sometimes your joy is the source of your smile, but sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. Just the, the act of smiling can increase your happiness level, which I thought was interesting. I try to smile all the time at everybody. Um, so maybe that's why, you know, people think I'm pretty happy. Um, Perform random acts of kindness. That makes sense. You know, it. they always say, you know, it makes you happier to give to other people than it is to receive things. So um, I think that, that any type of giving, whether it's giving of your time or giving money or giving of um, items, you know, whatever, material items. Um, spend money on the right things, not on... Um, belongings but on experiences um, sure obviously you know you need to have decent furniture um, you have to have the necessities in life and it's okay to buy nice things but don't hang your happiness on on accumulating things just for the sake of having things that you need to plan you know plan that great vacation or plan a bunch of mini 
you know, day trips with your family, um, use your money to, you know, go somewhere close to home and, um, and maximize the, the dollars that you spend. All of that increases your happiness. Um, avoid comparisons. And that's really hard sometimes. You know, we look at other people and we think, oh, they've got so much more than I do. They've got it so much more together than I do. Um, they're so much happier than I am. Um, and, you know, I know that's not true, but I had just a really glaring example of this today. Um, there was this, this man that I had, um, he and his wife and I'd gotten to be friends and friends with on Facebook. Um, he's part of a, you know, a, a social group that, that I'm a part of on Facebook, a Christian, um, group of some type. And, um, his wife got cancer. And so we all followed the journey and, you know, it was very sad and he was very brave through it all. Um, and then within a very relatively short amount of time after his wife died, he met this, this other woman who was just, seemed to be just lovely, and they were in love, and always, you know, posting pictures of how happy they were, and oh, wasn't this wonderful that they both had a second chance at life, and I, I don't remember specifically thinking, wow, I haven't seen him for a while, um, now that I have <laughs> developed some tools in Facebook called Facebook Lists, um, I'm able to check on some of my friends more often, and especially if I don't see them for a while, I can go and check on them. And I found several of her posts um, saying some kind of snarky things, considering that, you know, she was always very Christian and proper and everything, and I was like, oh my goodness. So, of course, I was curious, and apparently they're getting divorced after like two years. So, I mean, it's very sad, but it was, you know, case in point, you think everybody has this perfect existence. Um, and I think especially on Facebook, sometimes people, you know, I'm just out there. I'll tell people, you know, what's going on. Um, but some people don't. And that's that's okay. But I'm just saying we need to be cognizant of that, that everything people post on Facebook isn't necessarily the whole story. And everybody's not, you know, 100% better off than we are in, in whatever way. And then she said number 10 was to build and maintain close relationships. And she said, you know, that those do, they require effort and conflict and um, time and um, compromise. But that in the long run, those were definitely worth it because of the level of happiness that's possible um, when we're in meaningful relationships. And that's not just a marriage. Again, that's friendships, that's social groups. Um, you know, small groups, Bible studies, um, book groups, um, you know, hobby groups, meetup groups, whatever you want to do. Um, a couple of other interesting facts. She said that people with religious or spiritual beliefs tend to be happier. And, you know, the thought was that that's because, you know, their belief that this is not the end of the story and that there's, you know, another life to come. And that we have that to look forward to. So it can um, help challenging times be a little bit less challenging or help people weather those a little bit more. Uh, and again, access to a social network, um, a Bible study, a book group, a so you know, a group that um, you know, Monday night burger night or whatever. Um, that those were the um the contributing factor. So what she said is, you know, don't try to do all 10 of those because then, then you'll just run yourself ragged. Um, but to pick a couple of those and um, try to focus on that, either start doing them or do them more often um, or do them with a little more intention to raise your level of happiness. So I hope that was beneficial. I hope everyone um, had a very happy International Day of Happiness and um, that you remember to do what makes you happy because you only live once. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great rest of the night and a great week.